Hi again then guys and welcome to the 49th pick on my top 50 favourite vehicles in the world for 2018 and this one may surprise some people to be this relatively far down the list in 49th place, almost last if you want to look at it that way, but as I said in the intro of this series, cars between 11 and 50 aren't in any exact order anyway, it's just approximate. So you could, and even I could, sometimes consider this car to be higher on the list and sometimes lower. But the reason why it is here is, I would say, different to probably every single other car on this list. Because with the vast majority of my favourite cars and bikes, I love them because I love them in the real world. And then in a game, that's almost incidental. With others though, this one in particular, I love this car directly because of a game and because of when in my life I first came across the vehicle. And the car, of course, is the Renault Espace F1, what you could say is the ultimate unicorn of the Gran Turismo franchise. A car which was only featured in Gran Turismo 2, it made a huge impression on me when I was about six or seven years old, first played the game, first saw it, and I fell in love with it immediately. The bright gold paint, the insane price, the implied incredible performance, but also unlike some of my other cars that I loved on that game, such as the Chrysler Phaeton or the Ford GT90 or the TVR Speed 12, this one actually proved to be not just a fast car, because there are plenty of fast cars on the game, but a truly dominant one. The Aspas F1 is a machine to be reckoned with. It can take on full-on Super GT cars, GT1 cars, and oftentimes you can use it to straight up beat them despite being significantly heavier. The Espas goes beyond that though, because something which I absolutely love from my performance cars is when practicality meets performance. And as far as that spectrum goes, this Espas is pretty much at the bottom of that list, because to say it's practical is a real long stretch. It's not even road legal for a start. If you sit in the back without a helmet on, you're going to end up deaf, and you can't really put any luggage in the back, because it will probably catch on fire from the engine. But I mean practical in as much as it has four seats, for no real reason, just for the token of having four seats, and I love that. That was completely unnecessary. When you look at vehicles like the Ford Transit Supervan, it only has two seats. Now, of course, that car was a van to begin with, but you probably get the point. This car didn't need to have that token towards practicality, but they did it because it was to celebrate the anniversary of the Espas. And what better way to do that than to have that little, almost comedic flair of practicality in a car which is about as anti-practical as you can possibly get. Now for those who maybe aren't familiar with the car, which I don't think is many people, it's an F1 engined people mover, people carrier, minivan, whatever you want to call it. And the engine in question is a mid-mounted Williams 3.5 litre V10 putting out in excess of 800 horsepower, around 850, at least some quotes say that, some say closer to 800, and the performance on this thing is incredible. It was in the Guinness Book of Records at the time for being in the top 10 fastest accelerating cars in the world, production or otherwise, road legal or otherwise, with a 0 to 60 time of about 2.6 seconds, some say 2.7, either way, it's pretty rapid, on par with something like uh, an Ascari A10, for instance, even faster than a Gumper Apollo, which again is incredible for a 1300 kilo minivan, but it's not just acceleration, because this car doesn't look all that aerodynamic, but it can still hit 194 miles per hour. Plus, although it's not necessarily as quick as a Formula One car, of course, it's not slow. There's footage of this car on YouTube, and when you see this thing take corners, it really is a thing of beauty. It almost looks like an optical illusion, because a car this big and cumbersome looking should not be able to take corners as well as it does. And it has a special place in my heart because of Gran Turismo 2. So although it's not one of my absolute favourites, which of course is why it's not higher on the list, it will always have a special place for me, and that's why I decided to buy one. I've got it sitting on my shelf in front of me, and it's a great car. But that's it overall for this particular pick. Of course, you can check out the playlist at the end of this video to see all of the other episodes. And for now, as always, thanks for watching.